chapter 19. All right. And we're going to start at verse 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, I said, and he was chief of the publicans, and he was rich. Amen. Just keep that in the back of your mind now. He was rich. He had mutsies. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press because he was of little stature. He was a little man. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide, which means stay at your house. And he made haste, and he came down and received him joyfully. Yeah. And when they saw it, they all murmured. We know what murmuring is, right? Uh -huh. Saying he has gone to be the guest with a man that is a sinner. Yeah. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day, this day. say this day. This day. This day. Salvation has come to this house. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. For as much as he is also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The word of the Lord is blessed. You may be seated. Now, if I could choose a title for today, it would be simply Worth Saving. All right. Come on. Worth Saving. Worth Saving. Who is worth saving? You think? You know, you can talk back. It's okay. Like I said, we're, we're, we're in the sanctified living room. Don't, don't get too comfortable. We're in the sanctified, okay? Are we worth being delivered from bad circumstances or bad places? How about being brought from despair or taken out of a situation where we're being pressed? Who gets to determine our worth? When I feel like I can't make it and I don't know what to do, my cry has been, Lord, I know I'm not worthy, but please save me. Amen. I'm drowning in the deep end of the pool. I can't survive unless you said help. Yes. Now, when we hear about people needing to be saved, we often think about natural disasters or big calamities. However, there are times we need to be saved from small things or everyday occurrences. Yeah. Yeah. You know those things can send us to the bad place, right? Yeah. Okay. The things that will take our focus off of Jesus and place it on false hope. False hope are the things that Satan uses to distract us. Yeah. Like the lust of the flesh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it could be very many things when we talk about the lust of the flesh. Oh, right. But, uh, I'm going to go to the, the one that, that, that's the least offensive. <laughs> Gluttony. Well, <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, Lord, save me. That's a distraction. Uh, okay, how about the lust of the eyes? Or well, craving for everything we see. I, I see food. I see shoes. I see clothes. Save me, Lord. That's a distraction. Okay, what about the pride of life? The pride of achievements and possessions. There's nothing like a pat on the back or a new box for Amazon. Come on, say it with me. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. These worldly things can take the place of God, like the love of money, overindulging in harmful activities, or being puffed up. And these things are not from God. They're distractions. And when they happen, and they do happen, just because we're Christians doesn't mean we're not going to be tempted. Yeah. Amen. Right. When these yeah. things happen, we can ask for forgiveness. Right. We repent and we ask God for forgiveness. Right. And our Lord is faithful to forgive. Yeah. Okay? To repent means to be convicted. Yeah. I mean, this thing really bothers me. <laughs> and you turn away from that action that really bothers you. Right. And then you replace it with an action that's God-centered. Uh -huh. All right? For some of us who have uh, been married for very many years, well, you know how things can bother you. Uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. Some people can bother you. Uh-huh. And you react a certain way because they bother you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But then you repent and you say, Lord God, I don't want to be that naggy lady. Okay? I want to be the Christ-like lady. So please take that action out of my heart and replace it with something such as, okay, dear. Uh, it's all right. You know what I'm saying? You repent and you kind of turn away from that. And you keep practicing that. Okay, dear. It's all right until it becomes natural. Amen? Now, there are those who do not know God. And they need to be saved from the sin of being totally separated from God. Okay? That's the eternal death. Okay? You're not getting out from under that. You're there, you're in it. Only Jesus has the power to save us from sin by his death, atoning blood, burial, and resurrection. Now today, I'm going to get ready to say I'm not going to hold you long, but yes I am. Today, we will encounter a man by the name of Zacchaeus who thinks he's living his best life. Do some of us think we're living our best life right now? Well, he's wrong. Amen. He's doing all the wrong things and fooling himself into thinking he's doing them for the right reason. Rich does not equal right. Amen. Come on now. He's about to encounter Jesus. Okay. Every one of us has been in a place where we felt no one can help us. Yes. Your sin is too big or too embarrassing. I know that I've been there. Maybe you're still in that place today and you're just trying to find a way out. The good news is, God sees us as worth seeing. He sent his son, that's Jesus, to seek and to save. Uh We serve an on-time God. He knows your situation because he created you. The God who made the heavens and the earth actually knows your name and your need. The songwriter says as my Regina will tell us, he knows my name, he knows my name, oh, how he walks with me, oh, how he talks with me, oh, how he tells me, I am his own. Now, how did we look before Christ went on a seat and saved mission, and we were counted worthy? Think about what you looked like this morning when you first got out of bed. Get a good visual, because I know what I look like and would like to see it. Okay, keep that image in mind as we walk through this morning's text, and I'm going to do a verse by verse for you. We got a man by the name of Zacchaeus, a place called Jericho, where a a large crowd has gathered, and the expectation of a visitor by the name of Jesus. Uh All right. Jericho was a place where anything goes. There was no moral standing. Jericho had a long history of being out of fellowship with God. And Jesus was headed towards Jericho. Jesus. Jesus. He would pass through on his way to Jerusalem, where he would become the past over there who takes away the sin of the world. And that's another story, but we already went through that last week. Week before last, week before last. <laughs> Jericho was a rich city. It was known for its beautiful lush gardens and tropical oases. Whoever had money to spare would more than likely live in Jericho. It was called the city of palm trees. The walls were 13 feet high and it was well protected. This picture brings to mind going to a resort and living in a lap of luxury. That was the beautiful side of Jericho. But there was also a side of Jericho that housed, this was also the side of Jericho that housed moral decay and Uh spiritual emptiness. Uh The outside looked very beautiful. It was well put together. But the inside was toxic. It was evil. It was dirty. Can't judge a book by its cover. This is the side where we find Zacchaeus. Uh Now there was another side to Jericho, and this was the side where the poor people lived. They were barely surviving, and they were being taxed so the rich side of Jericho could get richer. Uh Who was behind keeping the poor people poor? The Roman government. Uh 
The government was taxing them. The government employed tax collectors. And guess who worked for the government? What's his name? Zacchaeus. Verse 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. All right. Okay. A tax collector is considered a traitor by the Jewish people. Amen. He is a Jew, but he's working for the opposition. Amen. The Jews described him as diabolical, a swindler, oppressor. He turned his back on his own people. He was cheating them. Uh -huh. He hired others to do his bidding, and he was becoming rich off of their blood, sweat, and tears. The Roman Empire was using him, and he was using them. He wasn't hurting for money, though, because he was rich. Yeah. Zacchaeus was large and in charge. Well, not really, but anyway, he was large and in charge. And you would think he had it all. But he was sin sick. He was missing something. Yeah. And even though he had a great deal of money, he was still seeking. Yes, still he was still seeking. You see what I'm saying? I just want to throw in a little side note. The disciple Matthew was in the same profession as Zacchaeus. Yeah. When Jesus passed by and said to Matthew, yes. follow me. Uh -huh. Amen. All right. Come on down. Now, Zacchaeus acquired his wealth by demanding people pay more than what the Roman government required. And of course, the extra money would make its way into his pockets. Imagine being so rich and yet so poor. Hallelujah. Money cannot buy what he needed. Now in life, we tend to feel if we have more things, we will be more fulfilled. And Reverend Slater let us know a couple of weeks back when he peeked into the closets of the people that are in the sanctuary, hallelujah, that having more things can cause yeah. Thank you, hallelujah, more problems. You know, you think if you have a lot of people who look at you a different way, like you've made it, you've arrived. Not so much. The things we treasure in life can become obstacles and idols. Amen. We can begin to depend on them instead of looking and depending on God's provisions. God sent manna from heaven, but the people wanted they wanted meat. They wanted quail. Yeah. And when they got that quail, they had so much of it, they became ill. Okay? This is why it is important to reconnect and recharge your mind daily. Find some alone time with God. This is when you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you find that time, like Deacon Hurt says, every day to just pray. Yeah. Tell God thank you. Yeah. Do this so you don't fall into these pits. Yeah. So but what we have learned, you can understand why people did not like Zacchaeus. He did not hold a special place in their heart. Just imagine how you would feel if you were not welcomed by anyone. If you came into the sanctuary and you didn't see a smiling face sitting next to you. If you felt dirty and unworthy all the time. If your happiness only came from the worldly distractions. Yeah. Wow. But Zacchaeus' life is about to become a testimony. Yes. This encounter with Jesus will change him from the inside out. Yes. He's never going to be the same. Yes. Jesus is passing through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem. Yes. His trip to this point has been quite eventful. He's been on a mission, but he's been working. He didn't come just to sit and to see. He actually has been working. There were some sinners that needed to be saved. Some blind beggars that needed spiritual sight as well as natural sight. Uh -huh. Jesus stops and calls to them and he says, what do you want me to do? And they reply, we want our sight. We want to see. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately they received their sight and followed him. They receive not only their natural sight, but they receive their spiritual sight. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
They realized their blessing and they followed Jesus who was on a mission to seek and to save. So I tell you, if you have a need, just keep calling on the name of the Lord. Now I wondered why Jesus would stop. He's on his way somewhere. Why was he, why would he stop? It, it, it was a long walk. He knew he had to be somewhere. He knew he had an appointment to keep. Wouldn't this interrupt his schedule? You know how it is when you're trying to get somewhere and somebody gets in the way? Well, None of us do it, but you, know, you can get a little testy at times. Well, you have an appointment to keep. You don't want to be inconvenienced. Well, well, realize that this might be an opportunity for you to share what God has given you. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus shared his saving grace, we can share God's word and offer life to someone who's in the dead zone. Yes. No matter what the situation is, we can always slow down a little bit, be the soul of the earth, and sprinkle some Jesus on it. Come on. Amen. 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 Now Jesus is always ready to give sight to another lost soul, and this is the keyness. Verse 3, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was of little stature. He was a short man. Yeah. Verse 4, and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Now, unlike Jesus, who had taken time to stop and minister to the Lord, Zacchaeus was in a hurry. He was on a mission as well. See, something was happening inside of him, yeah. and he had to see Jesus. Uh -huh. Now, I don't know why, because I wasn't there, but maybe he had heard about his miracles. Uh -huh. Jericho was crowded and it was jam-packed. Yeah. Passover was about to take place. Uh -huh. Just imagine, just, just come with me, imagine this scene of being in a marketplace. Uh, who's hungry in here right now? Yeah. <laughs> Got your attention there, didn't I? Okay. There was a hustle and a bustle. There might have been the smell of roasted leg of lamb. Can you smell it? Or fish. Or maybe there was some fruit laying around and they could munch on while I was waiting for Jesus to come through. The who's who in society was there, I said, imagine, okay? It's like being at a block party where a top celebrity is going to come through. It's a free event. Excitement was in the air. And they were thinking, will he perform a miracle for us? Will he turn water into wine, the good wine? Or maybe he'll give us free food like he did when he fed the 5,000. We don't know. We can speculate, but all I can tell you is, for a little short guy, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was on the move. In fact, he was going to get through the press of the crowd some way, somehow. As the body of Christ, are we equipped and strong enough in faith to allow people who are trying to get to Christ to pass through? Yeah. All right. Do we welcome them by making space in our hearts and in our pews? See, folks trying to get to Jesus, they have to overcome obstacles. Physical as well as mental. It's just something to think about. Let's not be the obstacle. This was not an opportunity he was about to miss. The miracles and teachings of Jesus had preceded him. Even the priests were baffled about how skilled Jesus was in the word because he was not formally trained. Zacchaeus was curious. He was curious because maybe he had heard that Jesus walked on water or heal the sick, or made the blind to see, or stop the issue of blood with the woman who had been unclean for 12 years. Maybe he heard about the gentleman who lowered their paralyzed friends into a house where Jesus was. And he was healed. Or maybe he got worried about blind Bartimaeus. Either which way, even though the crowd was pressing in on every side, Zacchaeus did something that was very undignified for a man of his standing. Remember, he was a chief tax collector. Okay? He had status. He pressed his way through, and he began to run for his life. I'm using this as a pun, 
but he was truly running for his life, even though he didn't know it. He climbed up the sycamore tree, the branches were low enough for him to reach because he was short, and he hoisted himself up, he found the spot, he perched there, and he waited. Yeah. Now, in my imagination, I can see people laughing and pointing, and I can hear the ridicule, because they did not like him. He was going to be the laughing stock of the town, and he was going to be a joke on top of all the other things they felt about him. A, a man of his stature didn't do such a thing. Well, this leads me to what happens next. Verse 5. And when Jesus came to this place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This encounter is going to change Zacchaeus from the inside out. Right. He is about to experience unlimited grace and love from Jesus. Yeah. The free gift of salvation. Jesus appears under the sycamore tree where Zacchaeus is perched. He calls him to come down, and immediately he comes down. Uh -huh. Immediately he comes down. And he says, I must stay at your house. Yeah. Verse 6, and he made haste, and he came down and received him joyfully. Zacchaeus gladly comes down and accepts Jesus' invitation. Uh, all right. Jesus sees me. Jesus sees me. He knows my name. <gasps> Zacchaeus responded quickly and with joy. And in that moment, that very moment, spiritual deliverance came and he received his sight. That was not something he deserved. That's not something we deserve. It cannot be earned. It is a free gift of God that comes only through Jesus Christ. You see, Zacchaeus accepted the invitation. Jesus extended the invitation, and it was received in his heart and in his life. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. I think I was up to verse 6. Amen. Take your time. My computer is doing what it wants. Amen. Verse 7, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, mm, he has gone to be a guest with a man who was a sinner. Yeah. yeah. Everybody go. <laughs> I know that's the, I, I'm angry now. The crowd goes ballistic. Yeah. Oh no, he didn't. Right. What kind of foolishness is this? They have waited to see Jesus too. And now Jesus has zoned it on a tax collector. This guy is considered the lowest of the low. He is the gum on the bottom of your shoe. Right. Why has Jesus stopped and given his time to this man? You know how we do the way we dress? Come on. You know how you do? Somebody walks in and they don't look quite like you. <laughs> Feelings and displays of envy, jealousy, judgment, condemnation, superiority were expressed by the crowd. How dare he? The crowd was shocked and angry. Did Jesus declare he would be staying at the house of a sinner? Zacchaeus, not just a sinner. Come on, y'all. All right. A chief tax collector. The lowest of the lowest. Exactly. Now, the crowd can be your cheerleader or your accuser, depending on which way the wind is blowing. And sometimes they really don't have a as to what's going on. They're clueless. They just want to be in a mix. Let me just come in and take a seat in the back and see what's going on. What is she going to talk about today? Is she going to talk about me? Mm. Is she going to talk about herself? They don't know what's happening. They don't know why they're there. They're just there. The light of the world is standing in front of them, but they are still in darkness. Still dead in sin, unable to see. Eyes wide shut. The crowd wanted someone to fix their broken situation, and they were looking for a king to deliver them from the Roman government. The crowd, they're everyday people. They're just like you and me. They might knowingly or unknowingly stop you from making your way to Jesus. They're like a sheep without a shepherd. 
It can be hard to find your way through the crowd, but it can be done. The Bible says in James 5 and 9, Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at your door. Don't grumble. She thinks she's holier than now. She thinks she got it going on. I don't like the way he preached this week. Don't grumble against one another. We're all one body. We're all one body. We're all one body. Hallelujah. So if you don't like what she got going, you don't like what she wear, then. I'm just saying this all. Okay. Don't get upset. Don't carry a grudge. Don't get an attitude. When you feel someone's sin is bigger than yours. Because we all sin. And we fall short of the glory of God. So even when you're frustrated and you feel justified, put your trust in God. Now how can we show the crowd and our family members how they can live better? The Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Yeah. How can we live better? By seeking the Lord with all our heart. Yeah. Jesus lets the crowd know by his actions, listen, I know how you feel. This is not my first encounter. Don't you remember what I saved you from when I brought you through? Yeah. 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 Has it been that long for us that we've forgotten? He gave us a future beyond what is here and now. The grace of God has appeared to bring salvation to all people. Verse 8, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Way back in eternity past, uh -huh. God had already set this plan in motion. Yeah. He knew who Zacchaeus was because he created him. Uh -huh. And Zacchaeus felt strongly and deeply. He felt remorseful. He felt repentant. He was moved to give back half his wealth to the poor and to repay all the people he had cheated. Paying back more than what the Lord required. Yeah. See, he sought help. He was convicted. Uh -huh. If you don't seek help, if you, you don't think you're sick, if you don't think there's a problem going on in your life, if you think you've got it all together, if you don't think you need any help, you're not going to seek help. You're not going to seek Jesus because you think you're in control of your life. And trust to know, I'm the biggest one to tell you, you're not. You're not in control of your life. You have to seek the Lord. What happens when Jesus enters your life is there's a sense of joy, obedience, right. true repentance, and generosity. There was a visible outward change in Zacchaeus. Yes. God knows my heart was not his story. We could visibly see what was going on in Zacchaeus' life. God does know your heart, and that should frighten you just a bit. Anyway. Does Jesus go home with us Sunday after service? Yes, ma'am. Does he live in our hearts during the week as we go through our daily routine? Okay. Are your children and your loved ones acquainted with him? Yes. Does his love and sacrifice cause us want to feed the hungry? Yes. Minister to the poor? Yes. Is your change visible to others? Yes. Or is it only something you say with your mouth? God knows my heart. Can we see your heart? Can we see my heart? Yes. And if we can't, that's okay. Because none of us are perfect. That's where the repentance comes in. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's what happened. And Jesus said unto him, verse 9, This day is salvation come to this house, for as so much as he is also a son of Abraham. He was delivered not only from the penalty of sin, but from the habit and the power of sin. Yeah. When God saves you, right. he saves you. Right. He right. saves you. Come on, he yeah. saves you. Yeah. Yeah. He saves you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
Verse 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus comes to seek and to save what is lost. He yeah. sees you right now at this very moment. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus sees the most unlikely ones, those who are lost. Yeah. Jesus sees the ones who go unnoticed, yeah. those with blinded eyes. He sees the unloved, the down, the out, and the counted out. He sees those his Father has chosen and he saves. Yeah. No matter where you are in your life, uh -huh. Jesus can turn things around. Yeah. He can change you from the inside out. Yeah. I want you to be honest with God and let him know in your heart that you need that. Yeah. Believe in your heart that you are saved. My brothers and my sisters, today I want you to know that you are not abandoned. Yeah. You are not discarded. Yeah. You are not a lovable or beyond no. God knows your name. Yeah. He knows your hiding place. He sees the area of your life but no one else can see it. He knows your pain. He knows your struggles. He knows your desires. Yeah. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In and of ourselves, we are not worthy. We are unworthy. We are filthy rags. We are lacking when it comes to God. But God knows this. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus. Don't let your pride stand in the way. Seek him. God is not asking you to do this on your own. Run to him. Jesus will save you. Nothing is too big for God to handle. Receive him. Jesus can save you. Jesus can transform you. He can heal our brokenness. Jesus will take the time to stop and see us and change us right into what we're meant to be. We are all meant to be children of the Most High. Hallelujah. He's going to take that time and stop to see you and change you into what you're meant to be. You think there's no hope for you? There's hope for everyone. There's hope because I thought I was nothing. I thought I was nobody. I thought I couldn't do it. But you know what? He thought I was worth saving. He thought I was worth saving. On Calvary's cross, he became the Passover lamb because he thought I was worth saving. He took our place and became saved. Why? Because he thought I was worth saving. He shed his blood and he died. Why? Because he thought I was worth saving. You conquered sin and death and the world. Why? Because he thought I was so powerful. And in the third day, he rose with all power in his hand. He thought I was worth saving. There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. Because of him, I have right standing with God. There's hope because God loves us. Jesus came to seek and to say, yeah. there is hope. Because just like Jesus said to Chris, he can save you too. God bless you.